Now we're going to build a piece of scenery in 3D in Vectorworks to put into our model box. But first I just want to take a second to apologize for some of the background noise that you might occasionally hear on my tutorials. I work in New York City and there's always an ambulance or a fire truck going by and delivery trucks being unloaded so I, I apologize for the ambient noise on my tutorials. Anyway, so now we're going to build a wall with a window and a door. And I've already got my document set up. It's an eight and a half by 11 document in half inch scale. And I've called it door and window wall. So my wall, I double click on the four key to bring up the rectangle creation tool. And I'm gonna make this a 16 foot wide by 10 foot high wall. And I'm gonna anchor it in the center. And I'm gonna snap it to the center of my document. And then with the set origin tool, I'm going to set the origin to the bottom center of my wall. And I'm going to turn my rectangle into four lines. Then again with the rectangle creation tool, I'm going to make a door that's 36 inches wide and 7 feet high. And I'm going to set the bottom center for the creation. And I'm going to snap it to the center, bottom center of my wall. So now we have a door, and I'm going to just move it over three feet, give myself room for my window, and I'm going to turn this into lines also. And I'm going to select the bottom line, and I'm just going to move it up. That would be the move command M. I'm going to move it up half an inch. So now we have the door clearance, and I'm going to zoom in here and with the scissor tool, which is the 7 key, I'm just going to delete the bottom line there so that we have our door clearance underneath the door. So then the window with the rectangle tool, I'm going to make it 3 feet wide by 48 inches high. I'm going to snap it to the center of this line here. And I'm going to move it up 36 inches. So it's 36 inches from the bottom of the window to the bottom of the wall. All right, now a lot of people I'm sure are thinking that Vectorworks has windows and doors that you can just plug in to walls. In the theater, we almost never use standard size windows and doors, especially if we're doing perspective walls. Vectorworks doesn't have plug-in windows and doors that can be in perspective. I'm not gonna do my wall in perspective today just to make it a little simpler for us, but we could easily make this wall in perspective and, and the top of the wall would be at an angle and the top of the door would be at an angle and the top of the window. And all of our mullions and all the panels on the door would all be irregular size because they would be in perspective. So it's, it's good for everyone, I think, to learn how to draft doors and windows and how to model them and, and not rely on the stock plug-in doors that Vectorworks comes with. If you only have the fundamentals program like I do, you don't have those stock windows and doors anyway. You have to have one of the higher priced packages. All right, so I could select all the lines of the wall. And turn those into a polygon. And I could select my window and do the clip surface and that leaves my window highlighted so all I have to do is delete it so now I've cut a hole in the wall and going to the right isometric view I could select my wall and extrude it and I'm gonna make my wall four inches thick but there's one more thing that I want to do this is just the way that I like to work when I'm doing doors and window casings I know that in the 3D model program, I'm going to want the return of my door and, and its casing to be one color and the, the wall, the surface of the wall to be another color. Same with the window, the, re, the return and its casing are going to be one color, set different from what the color of the wall is going to be. So I, I want to make a, a return for both the door and the window that, that's independent from the wall. So I'm going to undo this and go back to my front view and I'm going to undo and undo so that I have just the outline of my wall and window and door. 
So I'm going to say that my returns are going to be three quarters of an inch, a piece of one by. So I'm going to select the window, and with the offset tool, which is the nine key, I'm going to hit the nine key twice to bring up the dialog box. I'm going to make the distance three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to offset this line three quarters of an inch, and I'm going to give it no fill. And then I'm going to select these two lines and offset them three quarters of an inch. And with the command J to join, I'm going to join those two lines. Then I'm going to select this line, offset it three quarters of an inch, select this line, and command J will join those two lines. Select the bottom line and this edge and join those two lines, this bottom edge and this edge of the door frame, and join those two lines. And then I'm going to take the bottom of my door and jo join it with this line and this edge with the bottom of the door and join that. So now my, my door is complete and the wall is complete also. So now I can reselect the perimeter of my wall. And combine those. That is uh, modify compose. I always say combine, but it, the word is composed. So I can compose those and select this outer perimeter for the door jam of my window. And now I can do the clip surface. And that leaves the window highlighted, so I can just delete that. Now in our right ISO, you can see that I have this polygon is my wall with three quarters of an inch allowed for the return for both the door and the window. And I can extrude this four inches. So now I have my wall. The other thing I just want to point out, I'm designing this wall and building it in 3D as if the wall was like laying on the floor uh, rather than standing up. I'm going to stand it up later, but to me it's just easier to sort of draft it and model it just laying down in, in the flat view. Okay, I hope that won't be confusing for everybody. Now I'm gonna do some I'm gonna do six panels on this door. And this is the way that I do panels. I'm sure that everyone has their own way of doing this. But I'm just gonna draw a rectangle that is the same size as the door. And I'm I'm gonna say that there's a four inch spacing around the, the perimeter of the door. So I'm going to select the center of this rectangle and I'm going to do minus 8 and minus 8. So that gives me my 4 inch perimeter. Now usually at the bottom of the door we'll, we'll have a, a larger uh, spacing. So I'm just going to increase that space. I'm going to select the top center of my door and on the height I'm going to do minus 4 so that now I have 8 inch spacing down here at the bottom. So this would be the perimeter of the panels that are inset in the door. So now since I've got six panels and the spacing in between each panel is also going to be four inches, I'm going to select this bottom left corner and I'm going to do minus four inches for the four inch spacing that's going to be in between these two panels. And then I'm going to divide it by two. So that would be the width of one panel. Now for the height, there's going to be two four inch spacings in between the three panels high. So I'm going to do minus eight inches. And then for the three panels, I'm going to divide this by three. So that is the height and the width of one panel. Then uh, with the rectangle creation tool, I'm going to make this rectangle 4 inches by 4 inches and I'm going to set it to the top right corner of this rectangle. So that it, that is the spacing both going left and right and up and down. So I can select this rectangle, duplicate it, and the duplication has an offset to it. We saw how we set that earlier with the vector work preferences and under edit offset duplications is selected. So that's what offsets the duplications. So I can snap that to the corner to set the other panel. Select both of these panels and now when I duplicate and it offsets, 
I can now snap to this corner of this rectangle and duplicate again and it duplicates the exact same distance going up and I can get rid of this rectangle and now I have my six panels. I'm going to go back to the right ISO. I'm going to zoom in on my door a little bit so I can really see it. I'm going to select the perimeter of the door and I'm going to compose those lines and then with, with the door selected I'm going to select these six panels and I'm going to do the clip surface and that leaves the panels highlighted so all I have to do is delete them and now I have my door I'm going to extrude that three quarters of an inch and that gives me my my door frame now in the front view I'm going to create the door actually the I'm going to do a, a piece of quarter ply that will be the center panel of my door so I'll draw a rectangle that's the perimeter of the door I'll go back to the right ISO and when I extrude it I'm going to do a minus quarter inch so that's the quarter inch panel if we go to our top view, you can see here our door. This is the framing of the door, and this is the panel. I can select the framing and with the mirror tool, I can snap to the center of my, my quarter ply. I'm holding down the shift key to constrain the direction in the x-axis and that will duplicate it. So when I go back to the right ISO you can see now we have two, two framing pieces and that quarter ply in between. So now I'm going to do a piece of molding that's going to be our panel molding and I, I already have some moldings that I've drawn previously in Vectorworks out of a lumber yards catalog of moldings. So I have a door panel molding. And I'll just copy and paste it into my document. Now we have this piece of molding on our document but if we go to the right ISO view, you can see that, that that molding just stays right where it is. It doesn't go into a 3D view like everything else does. And the reason that is, is because in the ob object info box, under plane, it says screen. So it's as if this piece of drafting is uh, pasted onto my screen and not pasted onto the layer of the document. So what we need to do is change the plane from screen to layer. And now when I go to the right ISO, you'll be able to see that the molding stays with the layer in the 3D view. OK, so the next thing I need to do is rotate this piece of molding so that it's standing up and I can then extrude it around the panel. So with the molding selected, I'm going to go to Modify, Rotate, Rotate 3D, and I'm going to rotate around the center of rotation is going to be around the object center, and the x-axis is what I want to rotate around, and I'm going to rotate at 90 degrees. So when I go to the right ISO view, you can see my molding is now standing up already to be extruded. And I'm just going to select the bottom left corner of that molding and I'm going to snap it to the center of this panel. Now I'm going to use the 3D polygon tool to draw a path. And all I need to do is snap to each corner of this first panel.
and that creates my path. So then with the path selected and the profile, this piece of molding drafting is going to be the profile, I'm going to extrude along a path which was model extrude along path that's the option command X. The profile is highlighted in red so I need to go next to make sure that the path is highlighted in red and I need to fix the profile so that the profile will stay with that path and say OK and that does our panel molding. I'll go back to the front view and I'm going to duplicate this and snap it here select both of these and duplicate and it duplicates the same distance as before so I'm going to grab this corner put it up here and duplicate again and it'll duplicate the same distance so now I have all six of my moldings if I select all six of those moldings in my top view I can now use the mirror tool and again snapping to the center of that piece of quarter ply that I created drag over and that creates the panel molding on the back side of the door terrific all right so now I'm going to do the uh, door frame and I'm going to go to the top view and I already have a casing molding door casing so I'll copy and paste and again the plane I want to change from screen to layer and then I'm going to rotate this minus 90 degrees and I'll snap it here and then I'm going to I need to move it to three quarters of an inch that's the thickness of our door jam so I'm going to move that three quarters of an inch then with the rectangle tool I'm just going to draw a rectangle that will be my door jam now I'm going to get a piece of molding that's a door stop door stop copy paste I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees and then using the mirror tool now I've got the molding aligned so that it can attach to my door frame and I'll just delete this first one that I imp imported this one I also need to change from the screen to layer I'm going to grab this corner I'm just going to snap it to the center now this distance for the door is two, two inches and our door is one and three quarter inches so I'm going to move this down a quarter of an inch with the command M minus quarter inch so that gives us the correct distance uh, from the door stop for the door the thickness of the door so now I can select all three of these and under modify I can add surface so that they become one surface so that will be much easier for me to do an extrude along a path with those for those three pieces of molding so now I'm going to create a path for my door jam the profile that I created and I'm going to use the 3D polygon tool and I'm going to draw the perimeter of the door frame so I'm going to snap and click there snap and click here snap and click here and then snap and click at the bottom and I'm just going to zoom in make sure that I've got that bottom one correct alright so I've created a 3D polygon line that's going to be my path and I'm going to select my profile and I'm going to do exude along path 
the profile is selected so I need to make sure that the path is selected and then fix profile and say OK and that creates my door casing now with the window I'm gonna create a window frame around the window and I'm gonna use the offset tool and I'm gonna offset it two inches and that gives me a two inch frame around my window I want the bottom member of the window to be just a little bit taller so again I'm gonna set the top center point and I'm just going to reduce the height by one inch so that gives me three inches at the bottom and two inches around the side and top so then I can select both of these rectangles and I can go to modify clip surface and then delete this inner rectangle and that is my window frame I'm going to go to the right ISO view, select the window frame, and extrude it. I'm going to extrude it one and a half inches. Then back in the front view, I'm going to do the window panes very similar to how I did the panels in my door. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. That's the inside of my window. The mullions that are going to divide up my panes are going to be half inch by half inch. And I'm going to have three panes across the bottom and three panes tall. So I'm going to have two, two mullions across the bottom and two mullions up the side. So I want to anchor the bottom left corner of this rectangle. And I'm going to reduce the width by one inch for the two half inch wide mullions and then I'm going to divide it by three because there's three panes of glass so that's the width of my pane and then on the height I'm going to reduce it by one inch also to take into account the two half inch pieces of mullion and then I'm going to divide it by three for the three window panes and that's the height of my window pane I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to create a rectangle that is half inch by half inch. So that is the width of the mullion, both the height and the width. So then I'll select my window pane and I'll duplicate it. and then I'll duplicate it again and it duplicates the same distance in, in, in the same direction I'll select all three of these window panes and I'll duplicate them and this time I'm going to go up and snap to my half inch square there and when I duplicate again it'll duplicate up in the same direction and same distance so now I can select this half inch square and delete it and those are my window panes. Now to do the mullions, I'm going to draw one more rectangle. That is the height and the width of the window panes. And I'm going to send this rectangle back behind the window panes. To do that, we go to modify and send. You can send things forward and backwards. I'm going to send this back so it's behind the window panes so I can see them then I'm going to drag a marquee around all of the window panes and that rectangle so I have everything selected I have ten rectangles now selected that's the nine window panes and the one rectangle that does the whole width and height of the window with all of those selected I can go to clip surface and when I clip surface now I've only got nine rectangles selected that is the nine window panes and I can just delete those 
and that leaves me with the mullions. So that's a quick way to get to the mullions. I'll go back to the right isometric view and I'm going to extrude this one inch. And then in the front view again, I'm going to do one more rectangle that is going to be the piece of glass. And I'll go back to the right ISO and I'm going to extrude this uh, eighth of an inch. Then I'm going to go to my top view. So I'm looking down on the window. And this piece of glass I want to put in in the middle of my mullions. And then the glass and the mullions I want to put into the middle of my frame. So now it's all set. Now with the window frame I'm just going to do one more added detail. I'm going to put a little chamfer around the inner portion of the frame. I'm going to use the chamfer edge tool. I'm going to select the inner frame, inner edges of the window frame. And I'm going to chamfer this a quarter of an inch. So that just gives the window frame just a little bit of a bevel on the inner edge. I could also uh, bevel the backside, but since this is theater scenery and I don't really worry about the backside, I'm not going to do the backside. So from the front, you can see how we have a little bit of a bevel here on our window frame. So now I need to do the window casing. So I'll get the window casing molding. I'm going to copy and I need to go to my top view to paste the molding in. And I need to change the molding's plane from screen to layer. And I'm going to rotate this minus 90 degrees. And I'll snap this corner to the corner of the window frame. Now I need to move this over three quarters of an inch to allow for the uh, return of the window. So I'll go over three quarters of an inch. And I, with the rectangle tool, I'll draw the rectangle that will be the return. And then I'm going to do a, a stop for the window. So I'm just going to use a half inch by half inch for the stop. So with the rectangle tool I have half inch by half inch and I'm going to do the upper left corner as my set point. I'm going to set it here in the middle. Now with all three of these pieces of drafting selected I can add surface. So now this is one profile that I can sweep around the window for the window casing. And I'll go back to the right ISO and I can select this molding and bring it up here to my window. Now I want to, with the 3D polygon tool, I'm going to draw my path around the window. So that will be the path of the sweep, and this is the profile that I'm going to sweep. So I'm going to do an extrude along a path, and I need to go next to make the path highlighted, and I need to fix the profile. And that is my window casing. You can see that the window casing goes down three quarters of an inch below the window, but that will be hidden when I do a window sill, which I'll do next. So for the window sill, I'm going to get the rectangle tool. And I'm going to make the windowsill uh, 3 foot 5 inches wide and 1 and a half inches tall. And I'm going to anchor it right in the center. 
So that will be anchored here. And I'll go to no fill. And I actually want this windowsill to stick out a little bit. So I'm going to add three inches to my windowsill. Then in the right isometric view, I will extrude this. The depth of my wall is four inches, so I want to extrude it past the depth of the wall. So let's make it five and a half inches. And let's see what that looks like from the side. I think this could be a little bit deeper, so I'm going to change the extrude from five and a half to make it six. I'll go back to the right ISO. I think that looks a little better. With this windowsill, I want the edges to be rounded a little bit, so I'm going to do the fillet edges. I'm going to select the edges that I want to have filleted. And up here, it says that the current radius is a half an inch. I'm going to change that to an eighth of an inch. I just want a little bit of the softening. And you can see that that just gives a little bit of a edge, a soft edge to my windowsill. If we want to take a look at this in a 3D rendering, uh, we can go to View, Rendering, and OpenGL. And that will show us the shading for our 3D modeling. The problem that I see uh, currently, our windowsill is only showing up in wireframe. And the reason that is, is because it currently doesn't have a fill. So we have to put the fill to solid. And then it'll have shading. That's very important when we take a model into Cinema 4D. If it doesn't have that fill, when it goes into Cinema 4D, it's only going to be a wireframe also, and it won't render in, in Cinema 4D. So it's a good idea to always check your model and make sure that everything has a fill to it. So I'm going to go back to the wireframe. And the other thing I want to do is I want to put a board underneath my windowsill. So I'm, I'm going to make it 3 foot 5 inches wide, and I'm going to make it 4 and a half inches tall, and I'm going to anchor it in the top center. And I'll give it an extrude of 3 quarters of an inch. Now currently, when I extrude that board, it's at the back of my flat and I want to put it at the front of the flat. So I need to move that board up four inches. I'm going to do this in the side view. You can see that the board is currently at the back of the flat. So if I raise it up four inches, it will now be at the front of the flat right underneath my windowsill. I'm going to do one more little detail to it. I'm going to put a little cove at the bottom. So I'm going to use the circle tool. I'm going to do a radius of half an inch. And I'll set it right here. In the right ISO view, you can see where my circle is. So I'll extrude it. And I'm thinking I probably need to go in a minus direction. So I'll go minus six feet. So that, that takes that cylinder all the way across that board. So with the cylinder selected and that board selected, I can go to model and subtract solids. And you can see that th that cylinder then subtracted the cove from that board. So if I go to the side view again, you can see how we not have a nice little cove here for that piece of for that board. 
Now there's one more thing I'd like to add to my wall just to give it a little more complexity when I do the baseboard and cornice molding. Um, I'm going to do a, a plaster at one end here uh, so that the baseboard and the cornice can wrap around that plaster. So I'm going to do a rectangle that is 18 inches wide and 10 feet tall. That will be my plaster. So I'm going to extrude that 14 inches. And with that cube selected and my wall selected, I can now go to Model and Add Solids. So now the plaster is part of my wall. To do the baseboard and cornice molding, I'm going to extract this bottom profile so that I can use that as the path to sweep my molding for the baseboard and the cornice. So I'm going to go to Extract, and this time instead of using the Extract Edges, I'm going to use the Extract Surface Mode. So when I hover over this, it'll select this whole surface and then when I hit enter it will give me the profile edge of that surface you can see in the object info that it's a polygon but I don't want my molding to go along the back side so I'm going to turn this polygon into lines and you'll remember lines is convert to lines now it's all lines and I can deselect that back line and I can delete this line. This front line, I want the molding to die into my door casing. So when I hover over this endpoint, I can turn the, the crosshairs into a diagonal line. And that's when I can resize the line. So I can just take this point and drag it over and it's going to resize the line. So now my, my molding will die into that door casing. Again, with the Extract tool, I'm going to extract this bottom polygon. And again, I don't want the back line, so I'm going to turn that into lines. And I can delete the back line, and I can de delete this line. And this front line, I need to resize it so it dies into my door casing. Right there. So this line and this line are going to be the path for sweeping my baseboard. So I'll compose those two lines so that it becomes one polygon. And I need to do that on the other side too. I need to select these lines that are going to be the path for the baseboard on the other side. And I'll compose those. So that's modify, compose, turns it into one polygon. Now I need to get the molding for my baseboard. So I'll copy. And I'm going to go back to my front view and paste this in. I'm going to change its plane from screen to layer. I'm going, to, I'm going to rotate it so it's standing up. And then I need to rotate it one more time in 3D to make it so it's perpendicular to the surface of the wall. So that's rotate, rotate 3D and I'm going to rotate around the center of the object and I'm going to rotate around the Y of the working plane and it's going to be 90 degrees so now it's standing up if I go to the side view here's my molding I'm going to put it here at the bottom of the flat now I'm going to put this molding on top of a piece of 1 by so I'm going to lift this molding up 5 and a half inches and then I'm going to do a rectangle that will be my, mold, my 
piece of one by when I sweep, sweep when I extrude it. So it'll be five and a half inches by three quarters of an inch. And with that rectangle selected and this piece of molding selected, I can do add surface to make that all one piece of drafting. Now I'm going to take this profile and I'm going to snap it to the end of this path that I created. And while I'm at it, I'm going to copy and paste it. And I'm going to put it at the end of this other path on the other side for the other baseboard. So I select this profile and this path and extrude along a path. The path is highlighted. I need to fix the profile. And that's the baseboard wrapping around my flat. And on the other side, I can select this profile and this path and sweep along a path. The path is highlighted, so I need to fix the profile. And that's my other baseboard. Now I need to get the uh, polygon for the cornice. So I go to extract, but you can see that I can't get to the top polygon because the front of the wall and the plaster are in the way. But if I hold down the option key, it will select through objects. So now you can see it's selecting the back of the wall and the far side of the plaster and the top of the wall. So that's what I want is the top of the wall, and I'm holding down the option key to get to that. Once it's selected, I hit the enter, and I have my polygon. But again, of course, I don't want the back side of that polygon. So I'm going to turn this into lines, and I'm going to delete this back line. But I want all those other lines. So I'll select this end and the rest of these lines, and I'll compose those again. So it's turned it back into a polygon. So that'll be my path. Now I need to do my cornice. So I'll get the cornice molding. I'll copy and paste it. So with this cornice molding, I want to do a piece of one by that'll be at the top and a piece of one by at the back to help hold this molding together. So I'm going to do a rectangle, anchor it at the top left, and the width is going to be three and a half inches by three quarters of an inch. So that's my top piece of one by. And the piece of one by that goes down the side, I'm going to make it three quarters of an inch wide and three and a half inches high. And that's the bottom piece. So I can snap this here and snap this here and that is going to be my cornice. I'm going to do a, another piece of cove here uh, similar to what I did on the window but I need to do that first before I extrude it along a path. So to do the cove I'm going to first do a rectangle that's half an inch by half an inch. and I'm going to snap it to this corner here and then with the arc tool and I'm using the first mode up here and I click at this corner and drag over and release the mouse button and that can draw my arc so now I can delete the square that I drew this rectangle I need to convert it into lines I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. So this line, I'm going to resize it to that end of the arc. This line, I'm going to resize to this end of the arc. Then I can draw a marquee around all this and compose it. So now it's one shape. And then I can draw a marquee around all three of these. I can add surface. But that has a triangle in the middle that I really don't need. So I'm just going to 
decompose this for a minute. Get rid of these lines that do the triangle. And then I'll compose it again. So now I have one solid cornice. And that'll sweep along that path that I created. One thing I need to make sure of first is this when I pasted the molding in, I didn't change it from uh, screen to layer. So now I have to take a minute and select the corners and change it from the plane from screen to layer. And then when I go to the right ISO, it's not pasted to my screen, but it's on the layer. So with the molding selected and the path selected, I can do it with extrude along path. The path is highlighted, I just need to fix the profile. And that is my cornice. There's one more element that I'd like to add to this wall. I'm going to do a piece of pipe, like a steam pipe that's coming out of the floor to the top of the flat. And then I'm going to do a, a joint, an elbow, with a piece of pipe that goes across. So I'm going to go to the top view, and with the circle tool, I'm going to say that the pipe has a radius of one inch and I'll just set it right here at the center. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to move this in front of my wall. I'm going to say 11 inches and in the right ISO you can see where my circle is here. I'm going to extrude that 10 feet. So that's my steam pipe. Now I'm going to do the coupling. So I'm going to go back to the top view. And with the circle tool again, now that I'm going to make the radius uh, one and a quarter inches. And put it right, snap it right to the center of that pipe that I made. In the right ISO. I'm going to extrude that six inches. So that's the beginning of my coupling. I'm going to put a collar at the top and the bottom. So in the top view, with the circle tool, now I'm going to do a radius of one and a half inches. Snap that to the center. In the right ISO, I'm going to extrude this one inch. So that's my first coupling. I'll go to the front view. I'm going to select that coupling and I'm going to duplicate it and snap it to the top. So now I have a collar at the top and the bottom. I'm going to go to the right ISO. And on these collars, I just want to soften their edge a little bit. So I'm going to go to the fillet edge. The radius is set at an eighth of an inch. I think that'll be good for the collars. So I'm going to select that edge, and this edge, this edge, and this edge, and hit Enter. So that softens them a little bit. Now, there's another way to skin this cat. If I go to the front view, Instead of drawing these, creating these three pieces of 3D model, what I could do is draw a profile and sweep it so it would sort of be like a lay that would turn it around itself. And so to do that, if I draw a line here, here, I'll draw the straight lines first, and I'll come back and do the curves. So just for the moment, I'm going to take the collars and the joint. I'm just going to move them out of the way. I'm going to move them down a foot. So now we can see this profile that I started to draw. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. 
I'm going to use the arc tool. I'm going to use the second mode. Uh, I'm going to use the fourth mode. Click and drag. And let go there. And that'll set my arc. With that arc drawn, I can then mirror it. And I can select both these arcs and mirror them. Now I have my profile drawn, but I need to compose it. So I've got to modify, compose. Now in the right ISO, I can go to Model and Sweep and it's going to sweep at 360 degrees. So that's another way to create the same piece of model that I had created before. This piece of joint. It's going to be the elbow. So I'm going to delete this one and go back to the one that I had before. And I'm just going to move it back down 12 inches to where we had it. Both pieces. Okay. So from the side view, now I'm going to do a, a piece that comes out 90 degrees from the side of this elbow to create the elbow. I'm going to use the circle and I need to make it a, a one and a quarter inch radius. I'll snap it to the bottom center there and I'll lift it up three inches. And I'm going to extrude that three inches. So when I look at the right ISO, this is my elbow. And I need to put a collar on it. So I'll get back to the circle tool and the collar is one and a half inch radius. And I'm going to extrude that one inch. So from the front view, I just need to drag this collar out so it's at the end of the elbow there. And I want to do the same fillet. So I'll go to Fillet Edge and select that fillet that edge and this edge and that's the fillet back to the front view I'm gonna select all of the objects of my elbow and I'm gonna do model add solids so now it's the elbow is one solid piece of geometry Now with where the elbow joins and does the 90 degrees, I want to do a fillet there also. So I'm going to go to Fillet Edge. I'm going to select this edge and this edge. You can see that the selection goes all the way from the front all the way around to the back. And for the radius, I'm going to do half an inch. And you can see that does the fillet. So from the front view, And if we did view rendering OpenGL, you can see how we have a very nice fillet there where the two pieces join. So that is my elbow. I'll go back to wireframe. I'm going to move this up eight feet. And that's where my pipe will go across horizontally. So from the right view, I'm going to get the circle tool to do a piece of pipe. It has a one inch radius. I'll set it right here in the center. And then I'm going to extrude that eight feet. 
So from my front view, you can, you can see that pipe goes to the end of the flat there. There's one last thing that I wanted to show you in Vectorworks, and that's how to, to do a very quick section view. If you go to Model and Cut 2D Section, you can drag a line through where you want a section and then when you click it will create a section for you and for some reason it's rotated upside down so I'm just going to rotate it 180 degrees so that that puts it in the correct orientation and then I'm just going to drag it over so it snaps to this bottom corner here and I'm going to move it down 12 inches. And for some reason it, it makes it a group so I'm going to ungroup it. Go to modify ungroup. So now we have all of our lines and I'm just going to zoom in here You can see that I have the uh, line weight turned on. Up here, I have this little button that I've selected from this list. It's the zoom line thickness button. If I click on that, it'll turn the zoom line thickness off so I can see what I'm doing. And I'll zoom in on these moldings. I just wanted to show you real quick how we can take these lines and turn them back into shapes that we can put fills in. So I can select this piece of molding and combine it, combine it again to make it one solid object. And then with the fill, I can change that to a fill that I want. So you can see I can just keep going creating my section out of this piece of uh, the 2D section cut. I can select these four lines, combine them, so then I have the wall. that I have the door jam on one side I can erase this side and then using the mirror tool flip this over This is the panel of the door. And then I just have to add in a few lines to complete the section view so that we can see that this door is solid. And then we need to 
dashed line to indicate our door opening. But that's the beginning of our section. And of course, we could also do a section view the vertically. I'm going to do it through the window here. And again, I have to rotate it. Ninety degrees to stand it up. And I'll move it over twelve inches. And again, it's ungrouped, so I have to. Un it's grouped, so I have to ungroup it. And you'll notice that each time I do a section, it creates a new layer. I'll go over classes and layers and sheet layers in another tutorial. But we can look at layers here under Tools for Organization. Command L brings up the organization palette and under view layer options I tend to always want to have it on show snap others so I just wanted to show you very quickly how we can do sections how Vectorworks can help us create sections from our 3D model so now we can take our wall with the window and the door into Cinema 4D so we can start doing the artwork on it so I'll go to File, Send to Cinema 4D, and here's our wall laying flat on the floor again. You can see when it's imported that the, the center of the wall is at the center of the working document. And one thing that I always like to do when I import something into Cinema 4D, I always like to double check to make sure that I've got the right size and scale and that everything that it's in inches and not in centimeters. So if I go to mode and project, I can see that it is in inches. And if I click on the cube up here, it sets in a cube that fault is 200 inches cubed. So I'm going to change the X to 16 times 12 for 16 feet. The Y wants to be 4 inches. And the Z was 10 feet. So by placing that cube, I can see that the wall that I imported is in the right scale and everything's copacetic. So I can get rid of this cube, twirl this down. Here is all the geometry that I created in Vectorworks. So I just want to select this design layer and drag it out and delete the rest of it. And with the design layer selected, I can go to coordinates, and the pitch wants to be 90 to stand it up. But now I need to raise it up so that the bottom of the wall is at 0, 0, so it'll be sitting on the floor. The wall is 10 feet high, so I need to raise it up on the Y 60 inches, half of 10 feet. So now you can see it is sitting on the floor. There's one more thing I want to do to end this tutorial, and I just want to create a hinge for the door so that we can open the door. The way to do that, if you click and hold down on the cube, it will show you all the other objects that you can create, and one of them is called a null. A null object has no geometry, so it, it will not render. And what I can do under the design layer, I need to find all the elements of my door. So if I select the first element, you can see that highlighted is this the framing of my door and I can use the arrow key to go down in my list I'm just gonna back off a little bit so we can see what we're doing so you can see that all of these elements is they're all part of the door okay and that's the uh, door casing so we don't want that one 
which is extrude along path 12. So we'll select the one above it and holding down the shift key I'll go up to the top and select this one. Those are all the elements of my door. So I'm going to drag them out from underneath the design layer. And now I need to move the knoll over to where I want it to be the hinge. So I'm just going to select the red arrow and drag it over until it gets close. And then I can zoom in here so I can really see what I'm doing. I want to get the uh, knoll to snap to the corner of my door. door. Over here, this is the Enable Snap tool. So if we click on it, it'll highlight it, and now snapping is enabled. But if I hold down on that, it will show me what exactly is snapping. And currently we have Vertex Snap selected. So that's what I want. I want to snap to the vertex, the corner of that door. So now when I drag on the red handle, you'll see that it snaps to the corner of that door. Now I can select all the elements of my door and drag them into the knoll. So the knoll is now the parent. And I'm going to change the name to door. So now when I have the door selected, I'm going to change the heading. I'm going to drag on these triangles. And you can see that the door pivots right at that hinge. So I'm just going to leave that at minus 30 degrees. So this is as far as I want to go in this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'm going to start creating the artwork and materials for this wall. And we're going to get into some Photoshop work to do the textures on the wall.